procession to honour the dead of Europe's last major war. The German Chancellor's visit to Ukraine was seen as a last-ditch attempt to prevent another one from happening. The NATO and the USA have most... NATO and the USA made proposals to Russia that we support. We now expect a reaction and answer from Russia. But in a presidential security briefing performed for the cameras, Moscow said it was standing firm on its demand that Ukraine not be allowed to join the NATO military alliance. The response is negative on these issues. It can't satisfy us, of course. The Kremlin does appear ready to engage with the US and its allies on other issues like limits on NATO missile deployments and military drills in the region. Diplomacy, it seems, is not dead yet. Foreign Minister Lavrov said that he still thinks there's uh, oxygen here for diplomacy. But as talks continue, NATO members are bolstering their positions, sending more troops and weapons into Eastern Europe. Russia's also reminding the world of its readiness with military drills in Crimea and Belarus. And increased shelling has been reported in eastern Ukraine, where troops are locked in a protracted conflict with Russian-backed separatists. Despite all the talk about a potentially imminent invasion, there's no sense of panic here in Kiev, but people are making plans for what they'll do in the event of a Russian incursion. And that all starts with a question, will they stay or will they go? 23-year-old lawyer Dennis Hatsenyuk says he won't be going anywhere. He's just taken a first aid course so he can help out if there's an attack. We feel prepared. We feel confident, mostly. Uh, and I think that uh, we will resist. In the worst-case scenario, my family has a summer house away from Kyiv. We have potatoes and canned food, so I think everything will be all right. Do you feel that you are under threat at the moment? No, not right now. I feel quite calm. People here are trying to get on with life despite the ever-present threat of war. Nick Dahl, ABC News, Kyiv. And Nick Dole joins us now from Kiev. Nick, Ukraine's president has declared that tomorrow is going to be a day of unity in Ukraine. What's behind that? That's right, Juanita. He wants people here to wave flags and sing the national anthem, but that's really in response to Western media reports that tomorrow is the day that Vladimir Putin will invade Ukraine. Volodymyr Zelensky is really saying it's ridiculous to sort of put that date in the diary and pretend that it is set in stone. Those reports are coming from Western intelligence sources and they are being released quite deliberately. We are seeing now this very clear strategy from the US and its allies of deliberately telegraphing some of Vladimir Putin's potential plans in the hope that might make it harder for him to actually follow through. I think that strategy does have its limits though, Juanita. There's probably only so many times people can hear about a potentially imminent invasion before they do start doubting what they're hearing. Nick Dahl reporting there.